For me, let me just make it as simple as I'm so tired of looking at pictures and cartoons and things on magazines where all women, when we speak about women in agriculture, this is how they are portrayed. I think it's about time we brought a new picture and showed breaking the earth is not only what we're good at. In 2008 and 2009, I was doing research uh, for Tanzania Social Action Fund, basically trying to see how we can improve the situation of local food markets in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and how we can improve the lives of these agri-traders who are selling goods in the local food market. Basically, the striking thing for me was these women they were selling low-value crops, like green vegetables, as compared to men who were selling high-value crops, like grains, you know, you, you name it, maize, rice, and, you know, the fruits, like oranges, in bulky amounts. It is innovatively sustainable, community-oriented, directly marketed agriculture. If you engage in those, then you are in entrepreneurship. But if you're just doing for subsistence, then you are in agriculture. Jobs and employment will never make you wealthy. What will make you wealthy is entrepreneurship. So if, if women are in their numbers are already in, agri, in agriculture, and now we are talking about agri-entrepreneurship, then I can already see women breaking the, what they call the, uh, the glass ceiling. So the more I interview these women, and because I spent the whole, almost like two, three months for the first year, and then I went back again the second year, I spent almost the same time. I was intrigued, like, if these women have really tried to penetrate and start selling what men are selling, and why haven't they tried? It is estimated that more than 70% of all employees in the agricultural sector here in Kenya are women. The majority are casual or seasonal employees with no security of tenure. I believe that this platform will provide the space that is much needed for people of, from different organizations, institutions to come together and share their ideas and experiences that they have from the field. What has worked? What has not worked? What models when you are talking about finance? What can we do? Where are the faults in these models that are out there? Can they be improved? Which avenues? In my research, I was actually able to identify very many uh, models, all of them very innovative. And I think what one, what one thing that I can say is, I did not see any that is not successful. And it is difficult to fail when you have some money and you have agriculture and you have um, enthusiastic women to work with. What was meant by successful agribusiness for women? You know, what is that success? Success for who? And how has it been measured? Because we, we had examples of models that have been successful. How can we define success and for who? We had about 11 different models of, fi of financing and uh, the initiators set the parameters and it seemed like with without almost no exception, whatever parameters they set, they met them or at least that is what they reported. So success therefore can be defined if, if um, a team of maybe government, NGO, and, and, um, and the stakeholders set up a fund with specific object, objectives and they met those objectives, then we say they are successful. In this country we know 
women groups have been very successful in informal financial mobilizations. Those merry-go-rounds, those whatever. Can we study that, those models and upscale them? It is time to look at our financing models and actually look at them as businesses and incubate them so that they become full-scale full businesses. Then issue, the policy issues really came out, you know, several times. Okay, for example, the Crops Act. I'm shocked at um, the kind of misinterpretations on restriction of what crops to grow, where and when. Really, I wanted to find out, uh, first of all, the example that uh, could uh, give us the evidence that this, there are some policies in this country that is restricting the growth of crops. It was gazetted by the Agriculture Cabinet Minister, this was I think Felix Koske, uh, in 2013. I'm reading from an article and it clearly says um, uh, farmers will no longer grow and sell any produce without a license. Farmers will not be allowed to grow maize, beans, potatoes, coffee, sorghum, millet, rice, and other foods. There are actually a total of 17 uh, products. In other words, um, they have to be, to be registered. So probably what you can do for us is to clarify on what this policy is all about. Were the farmers involved? Was our voices put into it? Because if they say we are no longer allowed we have to license the crops. Were we, were we asked whether we need to be licensed? In one of the forums we had, and we were called like an agent, it was an urgent issue, because under the BMO, I mean, under Agriculture Industry Network, that was the major policy we were discussing, because we felt it was not supposed to be there, and it is under Crop Act. What, what I must say at this point is, Either, either that document was a, 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 a type of error. <laughs> because, I mean, there's no country that would, uh, would uh, ask farmers for, to be granted rights to grow food. I mean, it is not, it can't be like that. So, so, so that document, it must have been an error. And if, if at all, if at all it is in our Crops Act, please, after, after this, this time, I'm going to check that document line by line because that, that one is, we can even be jailed if, if that thing is, is in the Act. And I, I would lose my job right now if, if I start restricting farmers to grow food when it is a right in the constitution of Kenya. And I said I'll make sure that an amendment is done to the law that introduces the licenses to farmers to grow certain crops. I will make sure that the gender issues are mainstreamed in agribusiness through my committee of agriculture, tourism and natural resources and specifically asking a question in parliament about efforts that are made on women on agribusiness. Why don't we also come up with what we call innovative financing option, some that are actually homegrown. And we need to pay even more attention and more specifically we need to look into these issues to collectively with women so we can not only identify solutions on our own but together with them because I think in the end they are going to be the ones that will bring the solution to us and not the other way around. My organization which is a network of uh, universities and colleges dealing with agriculture, natural resource management, education. My organization will build new partnerships with many of the organizations here to bring tertiary agricultural and natural resource management education institutions closer to women agripreneurs. And I put into brackets through curriculum reforms and other things. I will help USAID develop an effective gender action plan that incorporates the ideas I've learned. I will engage with, uh, with the